Wow, would you look at that. Do you know what that is right there? That is half a building being torn apart by those thingies. There's some crazy demolition going on out here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I got up really early this morning to go out to the desert, but uh, surprisingly it was raining out here. It was raining on and off all day, not to mention it's actually really cold. And supposedly it's supposed to get even rainier, so I was like, dang, my plans are canceled. Luckily they were canceled or I never would have seen this beautiful sight of demolition. I was thinking about just staying in the hotel room, maybe getting started on Game of Thrones, you know, I got a lot to catch up on. But then I remembered there's somewhere in Las Vegas that's protected from the rain. Which is why we're headed back to good old Fremont Street. Downtown Las Vegas. Oh yeah, old school. This is the old part of Las Vegas, Nevada. In actual Las Vegas proper. And look at this. There's a hole in it. Pinions, the Golden Nugget, the Pioneer, the Golden Gate. They're all still here. But look at that. There's a hole. Poor Vegas. I guess Vic is all alone up there now. His girlfriend at the Glitter Gulch is gone. I had no idea about this. They basically tore out a whole city block. Some of the oldest buildings in town. Apparently they're going to build a massive entire block large resort down here. Which will be good for old downtown Las Vegas. Doesn't get as much action as the strip, you know. Of course, I've always got to come down here and take a look at the plaza. It was, after all, the inspiration for Biff Cannon's Pleasure Paradise Casino in Back to the Future Part 2. Which was a great flick. Great freaking flick. The guy's a genius. Keep pedaling you too. Fun fact, about six years ago or so, I stayed in here with my band when we were setting out on a tour until we found out the label owner lied and didn't have any money and the tour was canceled. But bad times turned into good times because the next year I quit my band and here we are together. I love this corner of Fremont Street here because of the good old Golden Gate. You can actually see part of one of the oldest casinos in Las Vegas behind all these facades. There are similar historic buildings up and down the street, but unlike the Golden Gate here, most of them are covered by false fronts that were added much later on. You can't really see the older structures behind all of this stuff, you know? Man, there's a lot of construction work going on down here in old downtown, which is much seedier and sometimes, honestly, scarier than the traditional strip that most people visit. But I just love the look of old Las Vegas. You ever watch Diamonds Are Forever? the old James Bond movie. So many classic films like that, all filmed right down here. Think of all the fortunes won and lost down here. Our grandparents might have lost some money here that they probably should have invested for us, right? Normally when I'm down here, I see like dirty SpongeBob. Once I saw a Pee Wee impersonator, you know, a bunch of costume characters and stuff, but not so many today. Not much going on down here today at all, actually, other than this drummer guy. I love stuff like that. Earning your living with a couple of buckets and some sticks. A man after my own Heart. I gotta say though, I kind of miss Dirty Spongebob. He was like a twin brother to me. Wow. It's a world without Dirty Spongebob, a world we want to live in. Ah, maybe. I would go to the palm reader to find out what happened to Dirty Spongebob. I don't have any writing on my palm. Must have smeared off. Well, for now it seems like the rain has quit. So I'm gonna keep heading on down Fremont Street past the world's largest slot machine. Slotzilla! I mean, what else would they name it, right? They better hope Mothra never comes by and knocks himself into this thing. Someday I need to watch all the old Godzilla movies, you know, in a row. Look at the size of that slot machine. I wonder if it has a big payout, huh? It's probably just the right size for me, because I don't mean to brag, but I consider myself a bit of a high roller. Earlier, I bet $5 on the slot machine. I lost it all, but I bet it. I don't think I'm very good at gambling. I am, however, good at appreciating the unusual. And the creative, and the Kitschy, which is why I love stuff like that. Look at the shite of that tiki. I also love mid-century art, design, excess, and Americana. And for that, there's no better place than Las Vegas. Just past the Fremont Street experience once you get back to real streets with real traffic. It's the Fremont East District, sort of the more artsy part of downtown Vegas. I usually never make it down this far, so today I thought I'd take a look. For one thing, there are a lot of nods to Las Vegas' sweet mid-century past. Look at that sign right there there, for example. Pretty sure that's a modern sign. But if we keep our eyes open, we will see some old originals. For another thing, there's a lot of hipster eateries down here, gastro pubs. Businesses catering to the young millennials. So naturally, there's a lot of crazy artwork here. Look at this here. Across the street is the famous El Cortez Hotel, one of the oldest hotel casinos in Las Vegas. For more than 75 years, this place has been operating. It was one of the first casinos that actually had the whole hotel resort 
resort aspect incorporated into it, even though it opened with a dirt floor. Things started very primitively here back in the old west. And actually, even though you think of it as an old west cowboy town, really, this hotel started in 1941. And it's one of the oldest of the hotel casinos, so Las Vegas isn't really as old as you think it is, you know? The El Cortez was actually once owned by Bugsy Siegel and other infamous Las Vegas organized crime mobster types. I don't think it's owned by the mob anymore, as far as we know. But it is a crazy part of Las Vegas' past. And today, the past is meeting the future because the CES convention is in town, the high-tech gadget convention. People come from all over the world to see the future. And the future is definitely here in the form of many self-driving cars that keep swinging by. They just parked that one down there for all the tech bloggers to be able to go inside and take a bunch of pictures. But every couple minutes, you see a car going by without any driver and you're like, what? That is crazy right there. The wave of the future. Self-driving cars, weird. You two better be quiet back there or I'll ask this self-driving car if it would mind turning around. Yes sir, there's some crazy stuff down here. Look at that ruby slipper. That's a replica of an old actual neon slipper that used to be out here in Vegas. And speaking of old meets new. Literally just a few feet really away from the old El Cortez. Classic 1941 meets modern 2013. Okay, 2013 was only a little while ago, but still this is relatively new. Las Vegas' world famous container park. Look at this place. Made out of 43 repurposed gigantic shipping containers. Which are used as shops and restaurants, sort of the ultimate example of recycling, sustainability. and. 41 extreme cubes. I don't know what extreme cubes are. I think I think those are them. But that is awesome. Think of the thousands and thousands of shipping containers in the world that just go to waste once their loads are done. Now they can be turned into all kinds of stuff. People are turning them into houses all over the country and now basically a giant hipster shopping mall. Look at that. They can make stores, they can make bridges and bars and even gigantic playgrounds. This is so weird. It's like living in the future. Look at the size of this playground. All these other guys want to go to the bar and I just want to turn on the slide. Or a climb in that epic tree house. I would have lost my mind if I saw that as a kid. I'm about 75% losing my mind looking at it now. That is amazing. And look at this. There's all these giant strange foam blocks. And some sort of interactive video game where you use your body to play? What the heck is that? We didn't have one of those on my playground. Man, even just the shops would blow me away. Like, look at this little hot sauce, jerky, gourmet, dry rub. What's a dry rub? Look at this shop right here. Very small, but still. Pretty dang impressive. Oh, also a very impressive futuristic pigeon. Tell me of your people. Look at this. I just got a free ticket to ride Triple A's self driving shuttle. What the heck? It looks like I'm about to be part of the future too. Hold well, that thought, Container Park. We'll be right back. Oh my gosh. Climbing aboard the self-driving shuttle. Wow. 12 miles on the top speed. 12 but, uh, miles an hour. That's a hard one. Weird. I'm sitting in the future. We still have seatbelts in the future. Nobody else wants to hop on board. They're afraid of progress. Triple A sponsored autonomous vehicle. Uh, my name is Brandon. I'm with Kaolish Transit, uh, which owns and operates the shuttle. So, welcome. Um, this is the first shuttle to operate like this in a real traffic environment like this here in the United States. Uh, where are you folks from? Long Beach. Oh, okay, cool. So, uh, it's a big breakthrough here to pretty much inform the public that the future is here. Uh, it is now. This is awesome. The car of the future, fully equipped with sensors all around, so if anything gets close to it, it suddenly breaks. But there's no driver. It's all a pre-programmed track. It even knows where to stop. That's so cool. You can see the stops, the exact distance from the curb every time, and the exact same point every time. That's amazing. Very concise on its on its track. I was feeling so impressed and so amazed that it had no driver until I noticed that this guy was holding an Xbox controller. Seems kind of fishy. There are times where I may need to do something, so if something blocks the track the vehicle's on, let's say a major, let's say there's a big semi on the roadway, I could use a joystick to manually steer the vehicle, get it back on its program track. Once it's on its track, the shuttle goes on its own. Okay, so it's not fully automatic. He can control it with the Xbox controller, but still, this is pretty much the shuttle, the car of the future, 
The future is now! So many things going through my head, like Walt Disney would have loved this, this is like a modern people mover, this is amazing! And it was free! Holy crap! Holy cow! I just rode in a car with no driver! I for one think this is a great idea, and it's all brought to you by AAA and Skynet! <laughs> what could go wrong? That's insane! We rode it all the way back to Container Park! <laughs> It's mind blowing. No driver. We went around the block. <laughs> oh, let's see. I think I showed you guys everything at Container Park. Well, almost everything. I forgot to mention one little detail. A freaking gigantic epic metal praying mantis. Would you look at the size of that insect? That thing is absolutely insane looking. This one's a female. There used to be two of them, but she cut her boyfriend's head off and he's gone now. That's <laughs> just a little insect humor there. There's there's actually just the one. That is mind-blowing, and it's not just a sculpture. Look at it. It's part of a ginormous art car. This mantis has wheels. This thing can drive. That looks like the scariest military vehicle ever. What the heck are we doing in the United States? Next time we go to war, we should build like a 100,000 of these things, because when the enemy sees that coming... I mean, if they're anything like me, they would run. Now, this is originally a piece of artwork created for Burning Man. You know, the crazy festival they have out in the desert once a year where all kinds of weirdos from all over the world create weird and epic amazing things. I've never been, but if uh, this is what you get when you go there, someday I'd like to go. This thing is 40 feet tall and 30 feet wide. 150 times the size of a regular praying mantis. And every night after dark, out of its antenna shoots 50 gallons of burning liquid propane. That's right, this praying mantis shoots fire. Self-driving cars, fire-shooting praying mantises. What the heck is happening today? It's supposed to rain tonight, so I don't think they're going to be shooting the flames this particular day, but someday I would like to see that. The future of transportation is sitting right there, and then over here is a giant, you know, 40-foot praying mantis that shoots fire. I'm actually more interested in this than this. So it's a good thing that even though the neighborhood may be a little sketchier going this way, there's supposedly even more wacky art. Look at this old gas station here converted into a work of art. Last chance, it says, and oh, I've seen some last chance gas stations like this in my time. Actually, the ones in the middle of nowhere have less sketchy people around them than the one over here, but it's fine. This would be pretty epic all by itself, but it looks like somebody didn't quite make it to the gas station. Look at this crazy green bus. Or more importantly, look at the side of it. Look at those. They're gigantic meerkats. Made of refuse. There's a lot of recycling going on down here. Would you look at the size of that artwork? Those are the biggest meerkats I've ever seen. Wait a minute. I thought this was something special. Turns out it's just a meerkat. Wah, wah, wah. I don't think that's very funny. Okay, that is pretty cool. Giant bus sculpture. Strange recycled last chance gas station art installation. Complete with futuristic Christmas tree inside. Yeah. Just a few feet away from a self-driving shuttle. An epic fire-shooting giant metal praying mantis. I thought it was going to do it for a second. Shopping mall made out of shipping containers that includes a wedding chapel up there. I was going to show it to you, but they asked me to leave because of using the camera. They don't like the camera. Vegas can be surprisingly camera unfriendly, believe me. Ooh, some love lock artwork I forgot to show you. That's a nice thing to think about, huh? Love? There's just so many crazy futuristic things happening out here within a few feet of some very historic things. You just never know what you're going to get down here. I don't want to sugarcoat it too much. I mean, downtown Las Vegas especially east of the Fremont Street uh, experience over here can be kind of sketchy and some of the things you can see down here can be quite not depressing. But every day we all make the choice whether to look at the world with our cynical eye or whether to look through the eyes of wonder. And I choose the wonder. Because as much as this can be a symbol of like, you know, some sad things, gambling and, you know, sketchiness over here, it can also be a symbol of creativity, rebirth, lots of new ideas, creative thinking like this 
Swan Mobia here, which I believe was also another Burning Man vehicle. I love art cars. That is awesome. Keep an open mind and choose to get excited about things. And places like this can be really exciting for more than just alcohol and slot machines. You know what I mean? Okay, it's starting to drip rain on me now. So I think it's time to go. Just one more quick stop at the Epic Toy Shop. Another one of those favorite toy shops of mine in Vegas. We've been here before, so it's just a quick look for me. If you even can look quickly, which is difficult. How can anyone choose in this place? Look at all this stuff. I want all of it. All of it. I had to get out of there. I simply don't have the budget. That. It's dangerous. Very dangerous. Bob Gurr? Oh yeah, the rain's really coming now. Well, hopefully there'll be better weather tomorrow. Because as much as I like Las Vegas, I'm still hoping to get out in the desert, at least for a little bit. But well, for now, we've seen a lot of crazy things, so I think I've done my duty. And if you check out all the links down below, you'll have done your duty too. Which means we can all go home and sleep well. Still not shooting fire. Dang it. <laughs> Bye,